Rebecca from Chemnitz, and this color palette may look very familiar. In the most recent Chemnitz Hanukkah special, I took these five colors, speckled them onto yarn, and then squished things together to blend it through. And I think I called it a bagless sandwich bag method that creates really soft colorways with some speckles sometimes, depending on how slowly some pigments dissolve. But one thing I noticed when filming the video is that before I squished everything together, this color palette was really beautiful as just speckles on a base. And so today I want to play around with this palette to create some speckles, to create a speckled colorway without squishing everything together in the end. And so that's what we're going to do. But before we continue on on this dying journey, I want to give a huge shout out and thank you to today's lab partner, Kimberly. Kimberly, thank you so much for being my lab partner today. And I really hope you're going to love this yarn. I am intentionally not looking too much at the video that we did last time, with the exception of pulling the colors. Because although I remember that I did mostly our hyacinth sage leaf and the sand dune with the other pink and peach being more of an accent. Uh, I want to let what these colors are doing on the yarn speak to me as we create this speckled colorway. Right here I have 300 grams of Knit Picks Swish DK. This yarn is 100% superwash merino wool. And to it I'm adding eight cups of water, with three tablespoons of white vinegar already mixed together. Now this could be much lower immersion, um, but you can see that after I squish things, the yarn is all at the surface. But since it's not super compressed with less water, we will see some spread of the colors going beneath the surface. Uh, we likely will not end up with a white background at all, but I'm super excited to see what happens. But so now I've turned on the heat and we're gonna let things heat up. Since we're speckling today, I need a yarn mop. And uh, here I have another skein of Knit Picks Swish DK that was pre-soaked with no acid. Eventually we'll add acid to it, but we'll try to get something soft. I do, however, wanna point something out. There is some blue in this skein that wasn't dyed. Like it is spun in like, <laughs> Uh, like lint or or something else. Uh, I noticed some and I pulled some out when I went to go pre-soak the yarn, but there's just a little bit in here. And so that must have just been a piece of lint or maybe a tiny bit of one of the blue colorways that was kind of stuck in the machine or got stuck in the fiber. Um, but I thought that that was a little interesting. But anyway, this yarn mop is just gonna be off camera and I'll be wiping my gloved hands on it to soak up excess dye as we're working on our yarn. But now I'm gonna go put on my deluxe rubber respirator mask, safety glasses, and gloves so we can start speckling. Okay, we are gonna start with our stars. Now I'm wondering if I've ever used hyacinth when things have already been hot. This is a color that is a little tricky to work with sometimes because uh, when yarn is cold, once it dissolves, it almost disappears. And so that just makes it a little bit trickier to work with. Now, I am, I think, probably using less powder than I did when I uh, did this for Hanukkah, and that's okay. Again, I'm trying not to look too much at what I did in the past. I'm trying to uh, do what the yarn wants me to do today. But it's fun to see the hyacinth right away because I'm so used to it disappearing. Uh, and then later on, it'll like show up again. But yeah, I'm not used to seeing it right away. So I think I'm doing three passes of these main colors. Maybe we'll do another. We'll see. I mean, I can always use different amounts on each of the different sides. I don't have to use all of the colors on each side. Typically, when I speckle yarn with 300 grams, starting with 300 grams in a pan, I will flip the yarn, oh goodness, uh, twice? No, three times total. Uh, I'll flip it over once, and then I will 
die one, flip it inside out and die one side and then the other. So oh, I'm curious what we'll end up with today. Okay, and this is a sand dune that I'm using now. And you know what? I'm really enjoying it. I'm going to do a little bit more of it. But I guess I don't entirely need to keep track of how much I'm using of each color. Uh, because these are the three skeins I'm dyeing, I'm not trying to dye multiple cans. But if I was planning on dyeing multiple cans of the color lay, then sometimes what I might do would be a sketch. Like these lines are fairly random, they cross all over, but I would say, okay, three of the hyacinth, three of the sage leaf, and then four of sand dune, and then accents of our pink and peach. And that is exactly what we're gonna do. Now I'm gonna, whew, it's not easy for me <laughs> to like add little amounts <laughs> of an accent color uh, because I'm always like overthinking like how much there is and where it's showing up. But I think that's all I'm gonna try to do of the Valentine blush. Oh, it's hard because part of me wants to come in and add more of it. And so, but this will make it maybe not every round uh, when something is finally knit or crocheted, but it will be there. Uh, the sand dune is making a showing. That's pretty nice. Okay. We're going to start up here with our peach. Adding, and it doesn't need to be even on all of the skeins, but I'm just doing little accents of these colors. And I'm going very light, very sparingly to the best of my ability with these colors. Uh, all right, I think that's gonna be that's gonna be good. <laughs> and we'll see. The thing is, when I flip the yarn, we can always add more color. It's done when we decide that it's done. But the pink and the orange are so bright compared to the rest of the colors that I wanted to have it be a little bit softer. Right here is a view where we can see all of the different colors. We can see a little bit of our peach blush. Peach blush. Yeah, peach blush, valentine blush, oh, they're both blushing, uh, our sage leaf, our hyacinth, and then some of our sand dune. Now, sand dune gives dark, I would say almost like pecan brown speckles, but it really is a soft color when you use it and blend it out because there's not a lot of pigment there. But with all these colors, we're seeing them feel brighter and more pigmented versus the softness that we saw when we then squished the dye in and around because the colors, when it's just the pigment particle, it's, it's saturated, but there's filler in there. So if we dissolved it, we would end up with something that's lighter compared to other colors. But anyway, I'm very curious how much spread we might have when we go ahead and flip this. I'm gonna heat this for 10 minutes and then we'll flip the yarn and start adding more color to the other side. It's been 10 minutes and let's flip our yarn over. I'm curious, ooh, we don't have very much spread. Um, I think one of the things that may aid with that is the fact that as I mentioned, a lot of these colors aren't super, super pigmented. Uh, and so when they dissolve, most of it can strike where it is. And so they're not spreading very much, which is good when we're doing a speckled color way. That also depends on the actual pigments that are in each dye. There are some colors like fluorescent ones where when you go to speckle with them, the colors spread so much that it would be hard to have something subtle. But anyway, let's carry on. I put my respirator mask back on and then continued to speckle, going the heaviest still 
with our hyacinth, sage leaf, and sand dune, and then the little accents of the valentine and peach. I found myself sticking with a similar sort of setup to the way I was layering the colors on the yarn that I did on the first side because there wasn't a lot of spread. Sometimes as we go on and speckle more and more, uh, there'll be some spread and other color through, so I'll start adding less dye with each subsequent flip. And that may still happen when we go to the interior, but it's hard to say until you flip the yarn. When I flipped the skeins inside out to access the yarn that was sort of sandwiched between everything, I thought originally that I might add a little bit less color there, but I think I ended up adding a very, very similar amount. Still trying to very lightly speckle the powder, having it pinched between my fingers just a tiny amount and letting a little bit fall at once. This is something that is easier to do with some dyes than others. There are some dyes that have a very, I, and it's all dry, but it's like a drier texture and so they don't clump at all. So then you end up getting more of like a, a mist of the powder when you add it. Versus ones that sort of, the powders will stick to themselves a little bit or a little easier to spread with your fingertips on the yarn. But anyway, I still added a reasonable amount of dye, waited another 10 minutes, flipped the yarn, trying to expose the largest white patches, and then added dye to the final side. And on the final side, I definitely did go lighter than I did with the second and third flips. All right, I think I am satisfied with our color coverage. I'm just gonna do a quick little check. Yeah, I mean, I think that things are good. I did notice some yellow coming out. I don't know if that's from the peach blush or from our sage leaf. And there may be some areas that have less color. But that's also just fine. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and flip the yarn. That way things can be nice and saturated. And now I'm also gonna add eight cups of water with two tablespoons of white vinegar. Uh, turn up the heat a little bit until we start steaming. And then I'm gonna go ahead and heat this for 20 more minutes to set everything completely. But I'll wait for it to get hot first. The 30 minutes are up, and so I'm now going to set this yarn aside to cool. And we're gonna do something with our leave no dye behind yarn. But I just need to remove this. I like to use tongs to remove the yarn and sometimes I wrap it around to help remove some of the water uh, because then it cools off a little faster. But the tongs, tongs are probably one of my most used dye tools. This is where our Leave No Dye Behind skein looks currently. And I am literally just plopping this into our dye bath and then moving it around. There was no acid in this yarn to begin with, but I think that sitting on the counter for, you know, 30 minutes or whatever, there, and the fact that these colors aren't that pigmented, that must have been enough for them to stay put pretty well. I'm not seeing a lot of color come out. Maybe some near the center, but also we're finally seeing like the hyacinth is really blooming a lot more. But anyway, uh, I still have the heat on here and I'm gonna heat this yarn mop for 30 minutes uh, and then I'll remove it, set it aside and wash it off camera. Let's wash our speckled yarn. And I think we can go ahead and add our yarn mop in at the same time. It's fun, the yarn mop is definitely more, I would say more pigmented overall than the speckled yarn. I use a lot of restraint. I'm very proud. Sometimes when I speckle, especially immersion speckles, I go really big. But the colors that we were using today were also on my side because they're not very pigmented colors. If I was, uh, all right, I'm gonna add a little bit of some dish soap near the end of that bottle. Uh, if I were to have used more pigmented colors, like the pecan brown that I've mentioned, or a black, there would have been so much more pigment and I think we would have had more spread. But since these, the pigments, are diluted with something that is colorless for the premix pastels, 
we were able to spread out the colors more and have a good success with speckles. This is one reason why sometimes I like to speckle with uh, Dharma Silver Gray. That's a gray that does not break. It's just got the black pigment in there. Um, instead of true black, because you still get black speckles, but it's a little easy to be uh, have a light hand with it. But anyway, we're not seeing any color come out of the yarn. So I'm gonna go ahead, rinse out uh, all of the soap. Then I'm gonna put the yarn through my Nina Soft spin dryer to remove the excess liquid, and then hang up the yarn to dry. Y'all, I had some restraint doing the speckled colorway. Don't get me wrong, we have beautiful speckles all over the yarn. But for speckling with straight dye powder, I did not go too heavy. <laughs> uh, we've got light speckles and they are not quite as sharp as if I had mixed them with citric acid powder, but they are very sharp and very small. There is some evidence of spread. You can see a little bit of like purple and more peach haze around some of the colors. But the real reason I think why I was able to get this colorway that feels a little bit restrained is that we're dealing with premixed pastels. If these colors were royal purple, emerald green, things that have a lot more pigment to them, the colors would have spread a lot more and we would have seen bigger speckles all over this yarn. So while I'm very happy to give myself credit for having some restraint, I think that the colors and the dyes that we had for this color palette really did aid us there. And while this yarn is really beautiful, part of me wishes that I pushed them a little harder. I didn't want things to blend all together too much, but when you're pulled back, you don't see that beautiful color palette that we had quite as much, not nearly as much as when I dyed the yarn for Hanukkah and I think I probably used a lot more dye. So here, I definitely leaned into what the dyes were doing and I love the result. I love this yarn, but I definitely want to revisit this color palette and try a speckled colorway, but amping the amount of dye that I use up. Let's turn it up to 11. <laughs> now, our yarn mop today is a really good I think example of what I'm talking about. A lot of times when I have yarn mops, the colors are really vibrant and saturated, but patchier because I'm wiping the dye from my gloved fingertips onto the yarn. But here we have a very soft pastel and not because I put this yarn in an immersion pan and let the color spread a little bit, but because the colors themselves are less pigmented dyes in general. And so there was less pigment for the amount of powder on my gloved fingertips, which gives us a much softer colorway that we see here. Kimberly, thank you so much for being my lab partner for today's episode of Dye Pot Weekly. I really hope that you are gonna enjoy your yarn. If any of you at home would like to learn more about being a lab partner, where you can get shout outs in an episode of Dye Pot Weekly, and then you pick a yarn base, tell me some colors to avoid, and then I'll design a video and create some yarn for you. You can find more information in the listings in the Chemnitz Creations Etsy shop, and I will also have them linked down in the video description. Kimberly, thank you again for being my lab partner. I've already mentioned I plan to come back to today's color palette again, but are there any other color combinations, color palettes that I've used in other videos that you would like me to revisit in another way? Uh, please let me know down in the comments below. Uh, commenting, giving thumbs up, and subscribing are the biggest way that you can help support the content here. So please do all the YouTube-y things. Uh, it really does help. <laughs> I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and thank you so much for watching.